The Guardian game is finally here and players finding the best method to farm the rails in the current event. Titans have been noted by the many to have exotics such as the insurmountable Skullfund and Ashen Wake to help them with making short work of the task ahead. So I thought to myself, instead of creating a build around these, why not create a build that can act similar, just like the Skullfort melee aspect and the Ashen Wake instant ability regeneration speed, but with more protection and one which upon certain criteria being met will allow you to generate outgoing damage by the bucket loads. Greetings everyone, 3 here here and welcome back to another Destiny 2 build video for this week's content. I hope everything is going well on your end, as today's build will be going to be a dedicated Guardian Games Titan setup that will allow you to farm the rails at your own ease or pace, and can use it outside the event just the same. Within the build, I will cover the main areas and topics that make the build strong and everlasting in PvE guarded areas, and also why this build is fantastic for taking on content where you're faced against a stream of ads or a similar tough enemy. To give you a heads up as to what's to come, think of this setup like touching electrical wire. Pure built up damage that can be released through different methods, with both methods being shockingly effective. So starting things off, the subclass of today's pick will be the Code of the Juggernaut, a fan favourite for PvE ad clearing or crucible super usage. Perks such as Knockout, Reversal and Frontal Assault is everything you need for creating a high damage and heavy protection build where we can increase our melee damage via knockoff, start health regen via reversal, and gain a weapon damage increase plus reload, and stability buff via frontal assault. All in all, will benefit us in the long run for the weapons we use against certain enemies, and then triggering the phase activating our war my cells. Now a lot of people from what I've seen are using the insurmountable skull fort to activate war my cells and use it to collect laurels while on the go, which is a very effective tactic I must say. But you don't actually need to use that method to collect laurels and kill ads effectively. Code of the Juggernaut has perks that does near identical things that Exotic does, such as health regen upon melee kills and triggering knockout without the use of full melee energy bar. What makes the subclass even better is that it also frees up your armor slot, so you can use something else which is more fitting for what you're going for. And this to me is what makes the subclass overall better compared to using the insurmountable skull fort. But they both have their pros and cons, which I do cover later on. What makes the subclass even more better is that it also frees up your armor slot, so you can use something else which is more fitting for what you're going for. And this to me is what makes the subclass overall better compared to using insurmountable skull for it. But they both have their pros and cons in areas that are used in. Now, anyways, this subclass is what we are going to be using for triggering a lot of warmind cells and helping us build up our fury conductors damage throughout our journey. For grenades, it's recommended you stick with either the pulse grenades for its duration and damage, or flashbang for its quick time use and large blinding area effect. Either one are great for crowded areas, just be careful when using the flashbang as you don't want to blind yourself. For the weapons, your primary and secondary will consist of a shotgun, and preferably a fast firing AR or SMG with good magazine size and can roll with Grave Robber. Your heavy should ideally be something that is great for hitting hard against the ultras or bosses if your other two weapons are cutting it in terms of damage. In my primary slot, I am running the perfect power lock shotgun with demolitioners and one to punch with a boss spec mod. As the build focuses on mainly melees to get kills, it makes sense to have a shotgun with a one to punch perk to make full use of its damage and if you ask certain players how powerful a one to punch wombo combo is against bosses, you'll find that a lot of players will vouch for you to go and grind for one when you can. This will be used mainly against the ultras and bosses I come across, but we will also be using it against the general enemies as well, as the Demolitions perk which provides grenade energy bomb kills can allow us to net a wide range of kills within our grenade. Plus, this also means you have a second way of getting war mine cells if you don't use your melee. Only downside to this is that the perfect paradox with random rolls can be obtained anymore, but Hawthorne's combat shotgun which is a roll drop is attainable to the general masses, although it will require a grind to get. Secondary now, we have the Misfit AR with Rampage and Grave Robber with a backup mag. Now, this is a weapon that doesn't get talked about at all, or a whole lot in PvE or PvP, and I'm not sure why as this weapon is like a mini machine gun, but lighter on the damage. This is a part of an AR art type that can have a very large magazine reserve line, where you can lay down some pretty effective suppressor fire at mid to close ranges. And with perks such as Rampage giving you a damage buff up to 3, combined with his large magazine size to boot, you can do a lot of damage in a short time frame. 
But the reason why I've changed the weapon as well is because it can roll with Grave Robber, which is another underused perk by players, but when combined with a melee central build, basically means you won't need to worry about reloading your weapon at all. And then lastly, your heavy will be down for your choosing, but do remember to pick something that can clear areas and do good DPS from bosses. A good example of this is the Xena phase, which is a perfect weapon in PvE for a sheer power against the toughest of foes. Not only does it receive a hefty buff in PvE, but its magazine size and explosive rounds can single-handedly clear our area within mere seconds. And it also is great for using against Vaders and Gambit, or for invasions, but you'll get a few hate mails doing so. Now for stats, we're going to cover three areas of expertise, with resilience, recovery and intelligence all being made for the bread and butter for the set. So the general rule of thumb is to make sure that recovery and resilience is above 50 at all times, unless you have something else in mind. Ideally, resilience should be at 50 max, and any more added, you won't get any more benefit, unless you're a titan that's working on, on his barricade. Recovery now should ideally be at the 50 to 70 ranges, as a faster recovery equals faster getting back into action. At the same time, if you want to on your end, you can push your intelligence stat to the 50s to mid 60s areas, so you can activate your super more often, which will be beneficial for using your super's shoulder charge ability, for constant super and activating your warm cells while on the go. Now, if you have any points left over, I would recommend that you dedicate them into the discipline spot for faster grenade regeneration, with at least a 50 to 60 to maybe 70 ranges being the sweet spot to aim for. The reason why I haven't got mine that high yet is that with demolitions built into my shotgun, it's not that needed at all. Unless you're focusing on using melees and grenades, in my case here, if you aim for the main sweet spot that I have and then get a weapon with the demolitions perk, that's generally all you really need. Next for the armor, you will need 4 season 9 or 10 armor pieces to slot in and require all my cells. They will need to be arc and preferably you need to cover the head chest and titan mark, as the arms will be taken for the exotic. Talking about the exotic, we will be using the ACD feedback fences for its exotic trait, VOV conductors, where building up midi kills build energy that releases when being struck back, but also reduces incoming damage. This will be used in the full effect for getting up close to the most dangerous of enemies, and surviving much longer compared to someone without them. Then combining them with the warm cell sheltering energy being active at the same time, means we can get 100% pure defense no matter where we go or fight. So with all this explained, here are the necessary mods you'll need to have. Head, Recovery and Strength for Rasputin mod. Arm, Recovery and Shotgun Loader mod. Chest, Recovery and Sheltering Energy mod. Leg, Shotgun Scavenger and Tyrant Surge mod. Mark, Concussive Damner, Thunder Coil, Strength of Rasputin mod. What we have now is a 100% on the go overshield bruiser build for those that want both A, grind up low elves with ease, and B, have defensive setup which will provide those a safe way if you're looking for an easy to use midi build with 90% uptime. So here's the deal, you use this purely against the minor and major enemies so you can constantly activate fury conductors, knockout, reversal and frontal assault for a massive boost in power and defense, and every time an enemy decides to attack you back via midi, they will feel the full blast of your exotic feedback, which for some may lead to a quick death, or others being on the edge of dying. Win win, anyways. When this happens, you'll also receive a reducement in damage, which, from what I understand, is impressively a lot on Mark III. If we take this example here I have against the Ogre on Titan, you can see that without the conductors active, I take around a 15% of damage and do 1k worth of feedback damage. Then, with it at max, I only take around 5% damage and do 4k worth of feedback damage, which is quite impressive. As without the exotic active, and from there, you can see that as long as I keep stacking fury conductors, you can literally beat an ogre to death with your fist. Literally beat an ogre with your fist. On top of this, to make the build even more stronger, I have added on the sheltering energy mod to get a 20 second overshield, so we are reducing the income damage even more to the point that ultras and enemies don't get a chance to pull off a large attack that would put us into a critical straight away, or kill us. And then, knockout activating upon mini kills, which can replenish at a steady rate, thanks to the strength of Vasputin, which gives around 35% mini energy back. We can also have our shields up practically all the time, as long as there are enemies to kill of course. So, Max Overshield and Feedback Fences combined will offer you this wonderful and easy to put together build for this season. 
I do also want to say that having Tyrant Surge and Thunder Coil are a must if you wish to pull off the things I am doing in the video. And those mods are artifact only, so once they're gone, they're gone. But don't fret, as the build will be usable still even without them after the season. So the numbers they've reduced are good for those that want to take on tougher content without being a liability to others, while at the same time you can look after yourself and take on bosses solo if you wish, as long as you don't overdo it on your end, as you're powerful, just not invincible. But as a heads up, I'd like you to be aware of some things when being active with the set that shouldn't come as a surprise. For example, you can still die if overswarmed by enemies, as although the build is designed to counter this in great effect, being swarmed by all types of enemies of different levels and health who do different amount of damage will still get you killed, even if you have overshield and fury conductors blocking all the time. The good thing about this though is that it won't be a quick death on your end, as the build will prevent you from dying so quickly, just it won't make you invincible, and you need to be fully aware of that. Secondly, ultras and bosses will still hit hard, and of course there's no change in this at all for whatever build you have. The fun thing about this build though is that like I showed you earlier with the ogre, you can survive deadly hits by procking your fury conductors to reduce your income and damage, and this way you can avoid dying so much against bosses, and also use one to punch for the whole majority of the content. But all you have to remember is just not overdo it, as you will still die, and bosses, although they have high flinch, they only have a limited amount of flinch. For example, using this build against the Gambit boss, I can flinch a boss up to maybe 5-6 times, then after that they will unflinch yourself and then you won't be able to flinch them until you go to the next phase. So remember you are limited in what you do. Don't overdo it, just take it smooth and easy, best way I can describe it. Overall I like the build and what it can offer in the most hectic of situations. You're always going to be having a health regen, overshield, damage buff, a lot, as long as you keep milling, and it's really that simple. And for those that are new to the game and want a effective but reliable build for all content, then this build here is literally just for you. Just follow what I have here, if you don't have the things there, just substitute for something else, but it's so incredibly simple to put together that honestly it will cover you all the way to end game to then you can experiment with other things. And with Guardian Games currently happening right now, this is truly the top contender for winning medals for Titans, so all you Titan players out there, if you're looking for a build to grind out medals and laurels at effective pace, this build right here is something that you want to go ahead and grind for. So if you enjoyed the video then please leave a like and a sub, also follow me on Twitter to keep up to date with Destiny content if you did that type of stuff, link is down below. But once again thanks for stopping by, I'll see you guys in the next one.